What's going on, guys? Sumi here with Thoughtcast, and today I'm going to talk about why you still love the person that cheated on you. This is a crazy phenomenon that happens where you still have emotional feelings. You still care about them. You still love them. You still want to be with them even though they did you so dirty. Why does this happen? Why do we fixate, obsess? We're so needy. We're so available. Why do we care about someone that could disrespect us to such a large degree? Shouldn't we naturally be repulsed by them? Shouldn't we naturally and logically understand that this person is not good for us? Yes, we should. But the reality is that's not what happens. And there's a lot of mechanisms that I'm going to talk about in this episode here why we like the person that cheats on us. First and foremost, I want you to understand that infidelity in itself is done when we're in a relationship. We trust this person. You can't have infidelity when you don't trust this person because the idea of someone random hooking up with someone doesn't affect you. But the idea of someone that you love and that you're in a committed partnership with cheating on you hurts so badly. And the level of that intimacy, the level of that care is what really describes that level of pain. The more you care about them, the more it's going to hurt. But a lot of us get confused as to why this happens. Why do we care so much when someone has shown us that they're not compatible for us in a relationship? Well, it's because it's an obsession. It's a psychological obsession that your brain has really undergone, and you have to really break down the science behind it. So today, I'm going to break down the science behind it and show you why you love the person that cheated on you. First and foremost, I want you to understand that love in itself is just an elevated level of the dopamine hormone in our brain. It's really just a psychological mechanism that our brain uses to promote reproduction. Our brain wants us to reproduce. Our biology wants us to reproduce. And what biology thinks it should do in an effort to make you have sex with someone is, oh my God, if I can just make this person think of them and and like them and constantly remind them of this individual, they'll eventually have sex and reproduce and so on and so forth. What biology doesn't understand is there are over 40 types of contraception out there in the world and sex is not necessarily meant for procreation anymore. It's meant for recreation. So what the brain really creates is that elevated level of dopamine and it makes romantic love not necessarily an emotion. It makes it a drive. Love is not an emotion. It's an internal mechanism that biology devises to allow you to reproduce. You must fundamentally understand this. Then we break it down from there. So breaking it down even further, there are three major systems that romantic love really focuses on. Number one is the sex drive. Number two is intimacy. And number three is chemical attachment. So the sex drive, the intimacy, and the chemical attachment are really what create that romantic love. Let's break them all down. First and foremost is sex drive, right? You want to reproduce. See, when your food, your hunger, your thirst, that's all taken care of, See, when your food, your hunger, your shelter is all taken care of, your brain and biology really focus on sex drive. So it's going to promote you engaging with this person because it looks at this person as your most likely biological mate. So it's going to constantly remind you of this individual because it wants you to have sex with them and it wants to reproduce the genetic code that it has within it. The gene is selfish. Richard Dawkins talks about this a lot in The Selfish Gene, where your genetic code really just wants to reprogram itself and reproduce itself in future generations. So you must understand that your sex drive is a major factor that allows you to care about this individual. It's difficult to go out in the world and feel comfortable with someone again. It's difficult to go get that physical intimacy the way that you had it before. It's not going to happen immediately. Even if you're an attractive woman or an attractive guy, it takes a couple of interactions and that barrier is going to reduce and make you reluctant to go and talk to somebody else. That's what increases the attraction that you have towards this old partner. Number two is the intimacy. You have memories with this person. You have history with this person. You have a favorite song. That doesn't go away when someone cheats on you. It still is going to be there. And the messed up part is you've psychologically created expectations for the future of what this intimacy is going to become. That is destroyed now. And the past of what the intimacy that you had before is now a painful reminder of what you had. It no longer serves to be something that you look at and laugh at and love. It's something that hurts you. And that pain in itself is something that we want to avoid. Because we have that pain of the future and the past, we just, for this moment, want to talk to that person. And that's why there's an internal itch to message them, to talk to them, to stalk them, to constantly fixate on them. And it's not something that we can satisfy based on the current conditions. Because even if we get this person back in our life, there's another internal itch that sets up. There's another internal problem that becomes more so of them going and doing these things with another person. It's a situation where you cannot win, you're always going to lose. It's best to just walk away or to revisit that relationship once you've completely detached. Last but not least is that obsessive attachment that you have to that person where you want to check their social media once again. You want to look at them. You want to see them. Your brain has created a dopamine pathway for the interaction of this person. See, when you date somebody, your entire brain psychology changes. It's not just you. It's your hormonal pathways that are now firing at different levels where it's causing you to care for this person. There's a strong level of oxytocin that you built with this individual from the physical and emotional attachment. There's dopamine, there's serotonin. There's a lot of different things that are going on here. So it's almost impossible for you 
to heal in the relationship when you're still in proximity with this person because all those mechanisms are firing. You seeing that person re-triggers all those emotional pathways. It's very difficult to get over that. That's why employers have policies to not date employees, and that's why people will typically advise you when you break up with someone to get as much distance as possible because you need to let your brain reprioritize what's important for you, and you need to let your psychology reprogram itself. I want to also explain another mechanism. When this person, you know, you're equal, is with you, it's okay, everything is good. But when they engage in infidelity, they're showing you that they have other options out there. They're in an abundance mindset. They're talking to other people. They're stepping out of the relationship in a technical sense, right? But you, on the other hand, are being rejected. You're being demoted. You're being neglected. And you're being chosen against. And that means that you feel lower about yourself. Your self-confidence goes down. So while your self-confidence goes down and this person is now talking to other people, it creates this massive gap psychologically where you now crave this person even more. See, cheating a lot of times causes you to like the person even more. And this is a phenomenon that most people don't really understand. People always ask themselves, am I crazy? Am I going nuts that I care about this person still? No, you're not. But what you must do is take the proper steps of healing to really get over the situation. So if you're someone that follows our program here, jump into one of our coaching programs, book some time with us so we can help you get through that healing process. And that being said, Sumi out.